we want to find f plus g of x, f minus g of x, f times g of x, and f divided by a g of x given f of x and g of x. To do this, we'll be applying the definitions given here below, where we're going to write each in terms of f of x and g of x, and perform the given operation. But before we do this, I think it'll be easier if we write f of x in expanded form rather than in factored form. Let's go ahead and multiply f of x out. f of x is equal to the quantity x plus two squared, or the quantity x plus two, times the quantity x plus two. So we'll have four products, one, two, three, and four. So we'll have x squared plus two x plus two x, that's plus four x, and then plus four. So again, when applying these definitions here, we're going to use f of x equals x squared plus four x plus four instead of the factored form. So for f plus g of x, which is equal to f of x plus g of x, we would have the quantity x squared plus four x plus four plus g of x, which is two minus three x. I think it is important to include each function in a set of parentheses as we did here. Even though it's not needed with addition, it is required for subtraction, so it's a good habit to get into. And now to clear the parentheses, we can think of distributing a positive one here and a positive one here, which will not change any signs. So this would just give us the quantity x squared plus four x plus four plus two minus three x, and now we'll combine like terms. F plus g of x will be equal to, there's only one x squared term, there are two x terms, four x minus three x is one x or x, so plus x, and then four plus two is equal to six. If we were asked to find the domain of this sum, it would be the intersection of the domains of f of x and g of x. And since the domain of f of x and the domain of g of x is all real numbers, the domain of the sum is also all real numbers. f minus g of x is equal to f of x minus g of x, which would be x squared plus four x plus four minus the quantity two minus three x. Notice here we do need the parentheses because we want to make sure that we subtract this entire expression here. So now we'll clear the parentheses by distributing positive one here, and because of the minus, we can think of distributing a negative one, which will change the sign of both of these terms. So we would have x squared plus four x plus four, then we'd have minus two, and then we'd have plus three x. So combining like terms, we would have f minus g of x is equal to x squared. We have four x plus three x, that's plus seven x. We have four minus two, which is equal to two. And the domain of this difference will be the same as the domain of the sum, which again would be all real numbers. Now let's take a look at f times g of x. This is equal to f of x times g of x. Again, f of x, we're using the expanded form, so we'd have x squared plus four x plus four times g of x, which is two minus three x. Here we're going to have six products. We'll have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So x squared times two, that's two x squared. Then x squared times negative three x equals negative three x cubed. Done with those two. Four x times two, that's plus eight x. 4x times negative 3x, that's negative 12x squared. Those two are done. Four times two, that's plus eight. And four times negative 3x, that's minus 12x. So, 
f times g of x is equal to negative 3x cubed. We can get the x squared terms. There's two of them. 2x squared minus 12x squared is minus 10x squared. And then we have 8x minus 12x, that's minus 4x. And then finally we have plus 8. The domain of the product of f and g is also the intersection of the domains of f and g is also the intersection of the domain of f of x and the domain of g of x and therefore the domain of this product would also be all reals. And finally for f divided by g of x which is equal to f of x divided by g of x we'll go ahead and use the factored form of f of x here so we'd have the quantity x plus two squared divided by two minus three x. This is not going to simplify, and therefore this should be the quotient of our functions. But we do have to be careful about our domain for this quotient. We have to exclude the values of x that would make g of x or the denominator equal to zero. Notice if we set two minus three x equal to zero, we would subtract two on both sides, and then divide by negative three. So when x equals two-thirds, we'd have division by zero, which is undefined, and therefore the domain would be all reals except x equals two-thirds. So we can say all reals except x equals two-thirds. Using interval notation to exclude two-thirds, we'd have the open interval from a negative infinity to two-thirds union, open interval from two-thirds to infinity. I hope you found this helpful.